we are going to continue to review how to factor quadrant. We are focusing today on the quadratics that are of the type ax squared plus bx plus c, whereas in the last lesson we just did the plain x squared. We talked about special products in the last lesson as well. We're going to continue to review those special products that we reviewed in part a of this lesson but these ones will have the um, factor in front. So learning goals are to be able to factor quadratics whose leading coefficient is not one. Leading coefficient means the coefficient of the highest degree term. So in this case, a is our leading coefficient because x squared is the highest power of the variable that we see. And then we also need to be able to solve quadratic equations by factoring. Um, because factoring isn't just for fun to put things in a different form. Its purpose is so that we can solve certain quadratic equations quickly. So yesterday, most of what we did was the factors that add game. So we have kind of a special case adjustment on that factors that add game for when the leading coefficient is greater than 1. So yesterday, when we had x squared plus bx plus c, we said what adds to c, or what multiplies to c and adds to b. Today, we are going to have to multiply the leading coefficient and the constant term. So that's going to be your a times c. Then you're going to play the game. So basically we have to add a step there at the beginning. Instead of just saying what multiplies to the last term and adds to the middle, we say what multiplies to the first times the last term and adds to the middle. We are also, after we've found the answers to the factors that add game, we're going to approach it a little bit differently. So this first example you'll notice I have entirely worked out because I wanted um, to type out here exactly what I would be saying um, as I'm solving this if I'm talking to myself and walking myself through each of the steps. So to start the game, you say what multiplies to A times C. So, we multiplied the 4 and the 6, the A and the C, to get 24. So then we're asking ourselves what multiplies to 24 and adds to the middle term, which is 11. So you can see that question here. Multiplies to 24, because it's factors of 24, that add up to 11. So you're brainstorming, <clears throat> either on your paper or in your head, what are the things that multiply to 24 and which of them adds up to 11. You can obviously see, because I've worked this one out already, that the answer to that factors that add game in this case is 3 and 8. Now, what we do is totally different here than what we did in the last lesson. In the last lesson, once we found the answer to the factors that add game, we opened our windows and we put those two as if they were our answers. That is not the case here. We have to do a lot more work when our leading coefficient isn't one. So what we do once we found the answers to the game is we split our middle term. So we take the middle term, which is 11x, and we're going to split it up into two terms with those factors. So you can see here, this turns into this. So it splits into the 3x and the 8x. Now I always get people that say, does the order matter? No, the order is not important. If you put 8x plus 3x, you're going to come up with the same answer. Your work will just look slightly different. So we rewrite the original problem with our factors that add answer by splitting the middle term. Then we are going to factor by grouping, which is another type of special pattern. So we're reviewing factoring by grouping within our um, ax squared plus bx plus c. So we group the first two together and the second two together. You can see I've done that here with the parentheses. Then when you factor by grouping, all you're doing is finding GCFs. So I look at the first two and I say, okay, 4x squared plus 3x, what's the GCF between those two terms? Well, the only common factor they have is the x. So I take the x out in front and I'm left with 4x plus 3. 
when you factor by grouping, whatever you get in this first parenthesis, your second parenthesis has to be identical to it. So on my second GCF factoring by grouping, I work backward. I say whatever this was, I'm going to recopy that same thing and then work backward. So I know it's going to be 4x plus 3. Then I just ask myself, what do I multiply 4x by to get 8x? Well, that answer is 2, which is why 2 goes out in front. And remember, if you distributed these back up, you should get the step from above. So x times 4x would be 4x squared. x times 3 would be 3x. 2 times 4x would be 8x. And 2 times 3 would be 6. Once you have factored the GCFs by grouping, you take this parenthesis that was identical, and it becomes one of your two parentheses in the final factored form. The other parenthesis is what I call the leftovers. So the leftovers were out in front here, this x and this plus 2, those come down into my other parentheses. So my final answer here in factored form is 4x plus 3 times x plus 2. Again, please, 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 we should be able to FOIL pretty quickly at this point. If I FOILed that back out to check my work, f for first, 4x times x is 4x squared. Outsides, 4x times 2 is 8x. Insides, 3 times x is 3x. And lasts, 3 times 2 is 6. These are like terms in the middle. Gives me 4x squared plus 11x plus 6. I look, that is exactly the same as my original problem, so I know that this factored answer is correct because when I FOIL it back out, I come up with my original. Okay, so I'm going to walk through another two and then I'm going to have you try some of them on your own. So first I want to look at A. Remember that when we talked about yesterday, we have a factoring order of operations. Just because we've reviewed this ax squared plus bx plus c doesn't mean that we get to toss aside what we learned in the last review lesson. We still are going to need to look for GCFs first on every factoring problem. We also should still look for our special patterns to say, is this a PST or is this possibly a difference of squares before we start doing all this work? Because if you've got a special pattern, it takes much less time to factor a PST than it does to factor by splitting the middle here. So we, if we have those, we want to identify them first. All right, so as I look example 2a, factor completely, I look at all three terms because I always check for a GCF first, 6x squared plus 33x plus 15, and I ask myself, do they have anything in common that they are all divisible by? And hopefully you are screaming out in your head that 3 is the common factor between those. So we take out the 3, and what would be left would be 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. So we've got the 3 factored out, so now we just need to worry about factoring what's left in the parentheses. <clears throat> it is not a special product. I know this because the first thing that I, one of the first things I check on special products is do these terms have perfect square roots? And 2 and 5 don't have perfect square roots, so I know that's not going to fit into a special product mold. So I'm looking for what multiplies to a times c, so what multiplies to 2 times 5, so multiplies to 10, and we want it to add to the middle term, which is 11. So that one's pretty easy. The factors of 10 that add to 11 are 10 and 1, so you probably don't need more than one try on that. So don't forget that you've got this 3 out in front. I always get people that kind of forget about it. Once I've found my factors that add, again, remember, when the leading coefficient isn't 1, you don't just get to fill these into the parentheses and be done. You have to split that middle term. So I'm splitting this 11x into my 10x plus um, 1x. So I've got 2x squared plus 10x plus x and then my plus 5. So now, once I've split the middle, I factor by grouping. So I look at the first group, the GCF there. They both have a 2 and x in common. 
So when I take that out, I've got x plus 5 left. Again, remember, whatever is in this parenthesis on the left, the same thing needs to be true on the right. And then you work backward. So ask yourself, what do you multiply x by to get x? Well, that seems like a trick question, because x is x. That means I'm multiplying by 1. So here's my grouping. Don't forget I had this lovely 3 out in front. So when I go to put it in my final answer, don't forget the 3. When you write your two parentheses, one of them is what they had in common here, the x plus 5, and the other are my lovely leftovers, in this case, 2x plus 1. And again, remember that the order is not important. If you add the 2x plus 1 first and the x plus 5 second, that's the same thing. That's okay. All right. Let's try this one more time. And I'm actually going to do C because C has pretty big numbers. And I'd like you to try B to be one of the ones you try on your own. So as I look at C, first thing I always do is check for a GCF. And as I'm looking here, um, I look and say, oh, 42 could be divisible by 3 maybe, and so is 15. But 17 is prime. So it's not going to have any factors other than 1 in itself. And 15 is definitely not divisible by 17. They don't have any x's in common, so that means there is no GCF here. So that means I'm going to do my split the middle. I'm looking for what multiplies to 42 times negative 15. That is a big number. You're probably going to need your calculator for that. So I'm looking for what multiplies to negative 630 and adds to negative 17. So you're going to need your calculator to help you with these factors here because I don't know very many people who know the factors of negative 630 right off the top of their head. So the first thing I did on my calculator, if they're multiplying to a negative number, that means that one of the numbers is negative and one of them is positive. So I just got out my calculator and divided it by um, negative 30. So negative 630 divided by negative 30, I got 21. So I found a set of factors because it came out evenly. However, those two factors add to negative 9. If I need them to be negative 17, that means that I need them to be further apart than these ones. So <clears throat> I need my negative 30 to be more negative. So next thing I tried was dividing by um, 15. And when I divided by 15, I got negative 42. Now, that's a step in the right direction. I got them further apart. Their difference is negative 27, but it's a little too far. So I need something that negative 630 is divisible by that is bigger than negative 30 and smaller than negative 42. Again, you just have to keep trying in your calculator. Negative 630 divided by 32. Negative 630 divided by 33. Keep going until you find it. I found it on my next try when I tried negative 35. That gave me 18 as the other factor, which those two do indeed add to my negative 17. So <clears throat> that means I'm going to split my middle term right here. My negative 17x is going to split into negative 35x plus 18. So that gives me 42x squared minus 35x plus 18x minus 15. So now I'm going to factor by grouping. So here's my first group. Here's my second group. First group, the GCF, what they are both divisible by. They both have an x in common, and they're both divisible by 7. So I take the 7x out in front, and then I've got 6x minus 5 left. If this parenthesis is 6x minus 5, that means the other one has to be as well. So then work backward. What do I multiply 6x by to get 18x? Hopefully you know that is positive 3. So now I just need to write my answer. One parenthesis is the one they had in common. The other is those leftovers, 7x plus 3.
and there is my factored version. All right, so I would like for you guys to work out B on your own. So pause it for a minute, try to work this one out using the same method, and then unpause and see if you got it right. All right, so first thing I would do is look for a GCF. They don't have any X's in common. And again, 17's prime, so there's not going to be a GCF number either. So in this case, I'm looking for what multiplies to 6 times 12. So multiplies to 72, and I want it to add to negative 17. Now, on the last one, I had them adding to a negative, but they were multiplying to a positive. Here, they're multiplying to a positive and adding to a negative. So that means both of the factors have to be negative here. So I'm looking for factors of 72. So the first ones that I think of are negative 12 and negative 6. But those ones add to negative 18. So I need them to be just a little bit closer together than negative 12 and negative 6. Other factors that I know of 72 are 9 and 8. So I try ne negative 9, negative 8. Those do indeed add to my negative 17. So these are my winners that I'm going to split this middle term with. So I've got, let me see if I can switch colors here again. So I've got 6x to the 4th minus 9x squared. Notice the they need to keep the signs that they, or the um, degrees that they have, minus 8x squared plus 12. So first group, second group, factor by grouping. So these two have an x squared and a 3 in common. So 3x squared. What would be left would be x squared minus 3. If my first parenthesis is x squared minus 3, that means my second one needs to be as well. And then work backward. Oops. I messed up here. This one should be 2x squared minus 3. No wonder I went to work backward and realized it wouldn't work. Yes, when I factored out my GCF, when I went over here, in order to get back to 6x to the 4th, it had to be 3 times 2, not 3 times 1. So now that I've got those matching, work backward again. So what do I multiply 2x squared by to get negative 8x squared? So in order to get a negative, it has to be negative. To get from 2 to 8, I multiply by 4. So negative 4 is what I'd be multiplying by. So now write my final factored answer. One parenthesis is what they shared. The other is my leftovers, 3x squared minus 4. Hopefully, you were able to get that one correct. All right. If I look at D, always looking for GCFs first, I look and I say, oh, those are both divisible by 4. So I'll take my 4 out in front first. That leaves me with x to the 6th minus 9. Now, the first thing that should be popping out to you is that that is a binomial, only two terms. So the only way that binomials factor that we know so far is with GCF, which I already did, and with difference of squares. So if, this, if what is left is not a difference of squares, then it wouldn't factor any further. So I look, does x to the 6th have a perfect square root? Well, yes, it has x cubed, because x cubed times x cubed would be x to the sixth. Does 9 have a perfect square root? We should all know that that's 3, so yes, this has to be a difference of squares. So I fill in two parentheses, one with a plus, one with a minus. In the fronts go the square root of the first term, so square root of x to the sixth is x cubed, so those go in the fronts. And in the backs go my square root of 9, which is 3. And there is my final factored answer. E, let's take a look at that real quick. I look for my GCF first. They don't have any variables in common. Um, the first two are divisible by 4, but the third isn't. First one's not divisible by 3, so there is no GCF. So, again, 
if you're just kind of rushing through, you might start to multiply the 4 times 9 and factor that with what we did in A through C. However, again, if you can identify special patterns right away, it's going to save you so much time. Because look, this is a trinomial. This term is positive. First and third terms have perfect square roots. Square root of 4z squared is 2z. Square root of 9 is 3. And the middle term is 2 times those square roots. So that means this is a PST. So I don't have to go through all of that, what multiplies to a times c, split the middle, and all of that. This is a PST, so fill in the square root of the first to the front, square root of the third into the back, and then fill the middle sign with whatever the middle sign was here, and then just put a squared on it. And that saves you so much time. Alright, last one. I look for a GCF here. There's nothing that they have in common. It's only two terms, so it has to be a difference of squares, otherwise it doesn't factor. So I look for square roots. Square root of 16y squared is 4y. Square root of 225 is 15. So, on difference of squares, square roots of the first in the front, square root of the second in the back, one parenthesis gets a plus, and one of them gets a minus. And we are done with those. So those go with our first learning goal. I can factor quadratics whose leading coefficient is not 1. So we reviewed some special products where the coefficient wasn't 1, and then somewhere we had to do the split the middle. Now our second learning goal is to be able to solve quadratic equations by factoring. All this is is adding one little step at the beginning and one little step at the end. In order to solve, first you have to get it equal to zero. Then you're going to factor it just like we have been doing. Then you'll set each factor equal to zero and solve. So. Step two is still factoring. We have one little step at the beginning, one little step at the end. I'm sure you will remember doing these from Algebra 1. So in order to get this first one equal to zero, I need to move these to the other side and then combine my like terms. So that gives me 8x squared minus 2x minus 21 equals zero. So there is no GCF there, which means because they don't have perfect square roots, I know it's not a special product, so I'm looking for what multiplies to 8 times negative 21. So multiplies to negative 168 and adds to negative 2. Now, because this adding number is so small, I know that the factors I'm looking for have to be close together. So the first one that I tried um, I tried 16, so I took 168 and divided by 16, found that that didn't come out evenly. So that was not even a factor. So then I tried 18, and that didn't come out evenly either. So then I tried 14. One, negative 168 divided by 14 gave me negative 12. So when I tried 14, I got negative 12, so that's one pair of factors. But I noticed that those added to positive 2. We talked about this in the last lesson, too. If you've got the right number with the wrong sign, that means switch them. So make it negative 14, positive 12, and now you've got the right combination. So we're going to take this middle term and split it into these two. So 8x squared minus 14x plus 12x minus 21 equals 0 and factor by grouping. So these two have the 2x in common and I'd be left with 4x minus 7. Then second parenthesis has to be the same as the first so I'm going to make this 4x minus 7 also and then I ask myself what do I multiply 4x by to get 12x. That answer is 3. So then I've got 4x minus 7 
times 2x plus 3 is my factorization. Now I'm not done because I have to solve. This is an equation equals 0. So this last step here, you just set each of those equal to 0. So 4x minus 7 equals 0. 2x plus 3 equals 0. And then get that x by itself. So over here, first I would add the 7. So 4x equals 7. Over here, subtract the 3, so 2x equals negative 3. Divide by 4, x equals 7 fourths is one solution. Over here, I divide by 2, x equals negative 3 halves is my other. So 7 fourths and negative 3 halves are my solutions for x. Now, these next two are much, much faster. This one was the hard one because it was the, you know, split the middle type of factoring that is more difficult. Um, I would like for you to finish B and C yourself. Do not leave them blank. If you leave them blank, I'm going to assume that you didn't really listen to this and, and you're going to be... Um, point deducted if you don't try them. So please try B and C on your own. So get them equal to zero if they're not already. Then factor. Then set it, each factor equal to zero and solve. And we will talk about those in class tomorrow. That is it.